So yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just begin, and um, I'll try to be like short and, and direct because you know the, after all that science stuff, it's probably be best to be uh, just very very direct. Uh, so part of what I want to do is is connect the ideas about a lot of the science and technology that you know you just you just heard about with the practical applications of how to actually make those things happen and turn them into reality. And that's really about entrepreneurship, like trying to take an idea, create some new product, and then and then make something into reality because that's what changes everything. That's what moves the world forward and creates new businesses and, and creates all, all this stuff. Uh, so just to, to give you um, some background, uh, a little bit about my, my experience, uh, I was uh, an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for a large part of my life, and then I also spent a lot of time in Silicon Valley uh, working for an organization called Singularity University. And so, so and it, it was really good because over the last several years, um, I've learned a lot of different things that have given me new perspectives uh, that now I'm, I'm creating my own company uh, here in, in the United States. So I'm using a lot of what I learned when I was an entrepreneur in China and then also what I learned by doing programs in Silicon Valley to apply those. So I've really saw and learned a lot of lessons over the last, uh, the last five, five or six years. So to begin, the things that I, I really learned the most that I want to just give some perspective that maybe this can help you with the different projects and companies you're working on uh, are when I was first starting out as an entrepreneur in, in China because even though I had some success, there were a lot of things I could have done much, much better uh, that I'm trying to learn from now and that, that hopefully you can, you can learn from. Uh, so the, the, the few things, the, the few biggest things from that is the first one, um, while I, I started a few different companies in China, but the, the main one, uh, the, the most important one I was working on, I was doing by myself. I was a solo founder, I was in, just an individual, so I was doing everything just as one person, which was really exciting because I was learning how to do manufacturing and design and engineering stuff and make websites and do sales and marketing and all these things. It was a really good experience to learn. It was not a good experience uh, in terms of doing everything as, as one person because people do so much better when you're a part of a team because you can share experiences together, you can learn from each other, you can share perspectives, uh, you can learn and, and progress a lot faster that, that way. Uh, so that's one thing that I, I definitely miss because I didn't have feedback from other people I was working with because you might wake up in the morning and say, oh, this is a brilliant idea, but maybe it's not a brilliant idea. And if no one is there to, to tell you or give you feedback, you might do things that are, that are not good or, or vice versa. People can give you ideas that are really good, but if you're not having that every day, then it's, it doesn't work very well. Uh, the other thing is that I, I didn't really have a network when I was in China. I didn't have programs like base challenges or being uh, with a company like Special Concepts where you're with people every day to learn from and, and share advice and experience with. When I was in China, I was doing everything by myself and I didn't know very many other entrepreneurs there. So again, I was, I was doing everything as an individual, uh, which, was, which was not good. And so to, to contrast and compare this a little bit with what I learned in, in, uh, Sing at Singularity University when I was working in, in Silicon Valley, I met hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs uh, over the last few years from all over the world, from the United States, from Europe, South America, Asia. And so I really got a, a really good perspective on what is required and what is necessary to make a, a very successful successful company because I I was learning from and meeting people that were doing startups all the way to big companies to billion dollar companies and some of the biggest uh, tech companies in the world. So really seeing what it is that enables people to be uh, successful and, and what's the, the best way to move forward. And what was really interesting is that a lot of the things that are really essential are more about how, how you think, like the mentality and the, the process that you go through instead of just the, the technical things or the hardware or the, the fundamentals. Yes, that stuff is very important, but equally important is the, the way that you think and, and how you interact with, with people. So the things that I, that I really learned is that uh, small, fast teams is the complete answer. That is what enables these things to happen for people to create new companies, new technology, and turn them into successful businesses, is that you have to be small, uh, not one person, bigger than one person, but still small, a small team, because you can communicate really well, you can move quickly, and you can go very fast, right? And speed is really essential. You want to be able to keep the momentum going, and that's one of the, the advantages that you guys have uh, now that you're starting companies, is that 
compared to large, that there's a lot of huge technology companies all over the world, but they don't have the advantage of being small and fast, which is really, really a, a, an important requirement. Another thing is having a common shared vision. Because if all of you guys are trying to do the same thing, have the same mindset and the same goal, that helps so much because it allows you, again, to go fast and to have a passion to do all of the work. Like being there on a Friday, a Friday night when it's dark to, to be learning and to be talking and trying to accomplish these things is really what sets small teams and small companies, small startups, uh, apart from large companies that maybe they have more financial resources, maybe they have more uh, technical capabilities, but they don't have that same that same ability and passion to, to do what you guys are trying to do, uh, which is really having a high degree of motivation and determination. Because to do anything really successfully, you have to do it for a long period of time, for, for years at a time, to keep going, to keep plugging away, to keep doing it. Uh, and that's not a, something that a lot of people are willing to do because they don't care about it very much. Uh, you know, the, the things that I've seen in Bulgaria with space challenges or special concepts, it's really challenging stuff. It's really, really hard. Like when I was there in Bulgaria earlier this year seeing the crazy stuff you guys are doing, it's really difficult uh, to, to do that, especially in the position where you, you have small teams where you're not a part of a, a huge company or something. And so having that motivation and determination just to keep going is, is really essential. Uh, and then the, the last thing that I really I uh, learned from being in Silicon Valley was that connections, it's not really financial resources, it helps sometimes, but sometimes having too much uh, financial resources can actually uh, limit your capability. It's actually, the, the more important thing are connections and knowledge and, and experience. Because if you can connect with people who have different expertise in different areas, that is more important and more powerful than, than almost anything else in terms of getting the right information connecting with the people who can help you understand how to do stuff. And that's what I was really missing when I was in, in China doing the, the startups by myself. I was spending a lot of time thinking and trying to find things on the internet and searching around because I didn't know people that knew how to do what I was doing. And that's one huge uh, thing that is really important that a lot of the, the best startups that I've seen that have become really successful, they are deeply embedded into networks of people, whether they're technology people, their investors or marketing people or sales people because in one phone call you can connect with someone maybe on the other side of the world who can say, oh, just do it like this and then boom, you, you save yourself you know, six months of trouble trying to do something. So having those connections is, is, really, is really essential. The good thing about, about all of this, like comparing uh, my experience as, a, as an entrepreneur in China to what I learned uh, in Silicon Valley and then now to what I'm doing to try to develop uh, uh, a new business are advantages for, for you guys. Because uh, if you think about what you're trying to do, you're working in small teams, you can move very quickly, you have a diverse range of, of mindset and experiences from the, the Space Challenges program, from all the lecturers and, and presenters that have, have spoken during the program. Uh, you can connect with probably you know almost anyone in the world who really has a high degree of, of technical capability for space and these things that, that you're working on. And so having that di diversity in terms of the team and the, the, techno the techno technological diversity that you guys have, plus the, the network uh, is really, really powerful. Uh, Raicho knows tons of you can harass him you know all, all the time. Just say, Raicho, we need, we need someone to talk about blah, 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 blah. We need someone. You know, he'll, he'll be able to find someone uh, that, can, that can give you some kind of expertise in that area, whether it's in finance or technology or, or whatever. Uh, and then through Space Challenges, there, there are people who have, like Sergey went to Singularity University, so he knows a, a lot of people there. Right, Joe was at Singularity University. So you should really try to leverage these things and, and uh, don't wait for you know, Right, Joe or other people to, to have ideas about stuff. If you come up with your own ideas, you can talk to people and, and get the right information by leveraging the network because that is it's so, so powerful doing that. Uh, and especially through the speakers uh, that you have. Like the, uh, the presentation that you just saw about all the crazy technology stuff, like any one of those different areas is a whole new in industry, capabilities, products, services that are going to be happening over the coming years. And everyone is basically in the same position around the world who's trying to start doing that because it's so new and it's so innovative and it's, it's just happening now, uh, 
that whatever you guys want to do, you can make it happen if, if you want to. So the, the last thing I, I want to talk about a little bit is just the, the uh, potential that, that you guys have. Because a lot of times when you're starting a company or starting a business, it's hard to have perspective about what you're trying to do and what could be possible uh, in, in the future. Because you're, you know, you, you're thinking so much on the operations of how do I solve this problem, how do we make this program to do this, this, this. But if you think about the bigger perspective of what you're trying to do, it's really amazing. Uh, because if you think about what, as being a part of a team with what you guys are trying to accomplish, that the challenges that you have actually make you stronger. So maybe being in, in Bulgaria is, is challenging because there's, there's not as many startup companies there, there's not as many people doing similar things to what you guys are trying to do. But all, all of these challenges make you stronger because if you do something that is successful, it means you had to go through a, a longer process or a more deeper process that makes whatever technology, whatever business you're doing, even better because you had to go through those, those challenges. And also it makes it more rewarding, which at the end of the day is, is one of the huge benefits of actually doing something difficult. It's just feeling like you accomplished something that was important and that was meaningful. And so the more you have to work at doing that, the more rewarding that will be at the end, and that's what people, that's really, really what helps make people have a happy, successful life, is feeling like you, you contributed something to the world, you did something that you cared about and that you believed in. So really focus on that as you're going through all, all of the, the work and the challenges and everything that you have to do. Uh, another thing that, that I think is, is easy to lose focus of when you're starting something is that all startups everywhere in the world the most successful ones, that are, they all started in, in pretty much like a very similar position, just an idea. And at the beginning, when it's just an idea, you have no idea what's going to happen. You don't know how you're going to do it. You don't know what's, what is going to uh, eventually occur, but it goes through a similar process. You have an idea, you start working, you get some, some people to, to work on things, and you just keep moving forward. And so that's all the biggest successes that's where they start. So it's just it's a very clear path. You just have to keep keep going down that road uh, with the things that I talked about earlier, which is work, hard work, determination, and motivation. If you put those three things together, plus a passion to do something, that equals success. Because it's just uh, success basically equals a lot of work over a long period of time doing something that you believe in, and eventually you'll be successful. The nice thing about that is that even if it's if it takes six months or if it takes five months or something, if, if it's what you actually want to be accomplishing, then it doesn't really matter so much how long it takes or when it happens or, or whatever, because you're just trying to fulfill something that you that you care about uh, and, and believe in. And also, the nice thing about what you guys are able to do, if you do all of that, is do something that can really benefit the world. Because technology, as we've seen over the last several hundred years, is what really enables people to do things that were never possible before, whether it's go to space, uh, find, uh, invent new healthcare systems that can help people live longer, or cure diseases, uh, new ways of transportation or energy. All these things are enabled through technology. Uh, and so what you're able to do, if you can, if you can uh, go down that road that I was talking about, is make things that can fundamentally improve the world and make people have better lives, which is a really amazing, a really amazing thing that, that you can do. Uh, and the last, the last thing I want to talk about is just that now it's easier than ever to do these things. It doesn't really matter if you're in Silicon Valley or if you're in Bulgaria or if you're in a desert somewhere in the middle of nowhere. If you have internet connection, if you know people, you can find the information that you need. And it's much easier to, do, to, do, to develop all of these technologies, new technologies now than ever before. Because the cost has come down a lot, the, the prices of hardware, components, or all these things has, has decreased a lot, even just in the last few years. You can use 3D printers to prototype things. You can use new kinds of software that are open source. It's so easy just to start doing any of these things, uh, which, which is why I was saying that for all of these, all of these new technology areas, that are just happening right now and that are going to develop over the next five or ten years, anyone who wants to do them can do them if, if you want to. Uh, you just have to you know, find the, the ways of, of uh, 
finding the right information and, and knowing how to, to go down that path with work and passion and everything. So that's a little bit about uh, what I learned over the last five or six years being an entrepreneur, being in Silicon Valley, meeting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of people doing these things. Uh, and then now I'm trying to take all these lessons myself and apply them to starting a new, a new company and a new business. So we're all doing this together. It's a collective, it's a collective effort that, because uh, it is a challenging thing because it requires a lot of work. But when you know people are doing it at the same time, uh, that's, that's what moves things forward. Because I'm a person that if, if you guys had questions or needed help with, ask me. Maybe I know people who could help you. Vice versa, if, if I need help with something in Europe or Eastern Europe, I'm going to ask Raicho or I'll ask you guys. So it just by all doing this together, uh, it, it really helps a lot and can make it, make it possible. So um, I really, really admire what you guys are doing and trying to, to do all these, these new companies and new special concepts about creating new, uh, new products and technologies. So I uh, really hope it goes well. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Um, and hopefully that was that was helped a little bit because the, the most important thing is just to have a lot of motivation and determination to, to make it make it possible. Yeah, no, it's a really it's a really good question because of all the startups that I've that I've seen over the last uh, many many years. Those issues like that are one of the biggest, uh, the biggest reasons why startups fail is because people can't find the right way to balance those things. They don't communicate very well, and they they, they have these issues, these uh, personal problems that that are created that uh, that make the company not not work. So it's a really important uh, thing to figure out. I think for for trying to understand how to do that. There's a few things that are really important. The first one is just talking a lot, having a lot of communication so that people, everyone knows what everyone else is interested in, what they're good at, because if you don't talk about the things that you want to do or the things that you have experience with, people aren't really going to know. So just having meetings just to, to talk through those things is really important, especially at the, at the beginning. Uh, another thing is just ha yeah, having open communication so that you know when, when a problem comes up, because sometimes people get frustrated doing certain kinds of work, and if that's the case, then they, they should move to something else that's better for, for what they want to do. Because if it's going to take years to make a company work, it's not, it's not going to happen if people are getting frustrated all the time, because eventually they're going to want to leave and do something, do, something, uh, uh, do something different. So I think that's, that's a really important thing. And, and also, another one is just... I think what happens a lot of times in startups is people people are really excited about the idea of being successful and they have their their ego attached to that idea. And so instead of thinking about what can accomplish the, the common purpose, they think about how can I be the famous successful person doing this thing with this, this startup. And that usually has a, a, a really big challenge also because when people want to control a certain piece of a company or they don't want to share what they know, then that's a really big problem also. So I think not having an, an, an ego invested into it and thinking about the, the common purpose and just communicating really well eventually will enable people to, to go into the place that they, that they should be. So a lot of it is just communication because also people can learn new skills as well because it's more driven by what people are motivated to do rather than what on paper maybe think looks the best. Yeah, no, it's it's a big that's like that's a really good question as well because a lot of things it's a sort of it's, it's not always easy to, to do both because when you're first starting a company and you, if you're trying to find investors or, or things, you, you need to show results for people to believe in what you're doing. Yeah, however, at the same time, having a process is what enables people to be successful over a long period of time. So I, I think, I think the, the, the best way to do it is a, is a balance where maybe short term you're focused on, on results to get going, but at the same time, you're trying to build processes 
or or just being aware that that maybe after you get to a certain result, you're gonna switch to a certain process that you've been thinking and developing over time. So I think it's 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 best to try to do it both ways because in in general, if you have the right process and the right approach, eventually you'll be successful. Um, but at the beginning, yeah. So I think I think a balance is is really good.